Welcome back to NFL Imperialism. I will spin the wheel of selection and direction, making all NFL teams expand or fight for their land. Winning team will be the last standing on the entire United States map. Today's episode will include the same five power-ups as last time. If you're unfamiliar with them, check out episode three, as well as three new power-ups and two new power-downs. Also, expansion will now give teams a 90 and under overall player, with every team losing means that their players will join the free agent pool. So let's get started for NFL Imperialism Episode 4, bound to be the most chaotic episode yet. Now it's time to introduce you to our new power-ups, including Rewind, Go Back in Time, Steal a Legend, and then Go Back to the Future and have a Hall of Fame player for the remainder of the episode. Redeployed, either swap places with another team or move to an open state. And Reinforced, provides protection for a land on from another team. Now our power downs. Landmine will cause a team to lose their best rated player, and Poisoned will drop the two best players by 10 overall. Let's go ahead and place these power-ups, and since there's 10 in total, we're going to get started fast. We will begin by spinning a wheel to determine what power-ups will be placed on the map. We're going to start with our new power-up, Reinforce. It's going to land on the state of Wyoming. You can already tell the Denver Broncos are smiling through their teeth right now. They are definitely going to get that. Next up, we're going to have the Rewind power-up, so two new power-ups are ready, and Rewind will be placed on the state of North Dakota. And already on the top of my head, I'm looking at who's next to it, the Vikings. This could easily be Randy Moss. Then we have the Poisoned Power Down, one of our new po Power Downs. It's going to go to Oklahoma. So last time, Oklahoma was really beneficial for the Cowboys. Maybe this time, it's going to hurt them instead. And then we'll get the Bandit Power Up, a returning one, of course. It's going to go to New Mexico. That's going to be next to the Cardinals. And also, not far to range of the Cowboys as well and of course the Broncos. Then we will have Afterlife, a very powerful power-up, gives them a second chance. It's gonna go to New Jersey. A lot of teams up there can compete for this one. All three New York teams, Pennsylvania, and the Maryland team, so let's see who gets it. And then we will have the Landmine, the second power down. This one could really hurt depending on what team gets it. It's gonna go to Alabama. All right, last time Alabama had a good power-up, now it has a bad power-up. Atlanta Falcons in a little bit of danger here. And then we're going to have Double Trouble. Really good power-up. It really worked out pretty well last time. It's going to go to Maine. I don't know how long it'll take for someone to claim this one because it's kind of isolated, but maybe the Patriots have a shot. And then we have Clone. Clone, the most powerful of them all in my opinion. Clone is going to Delaware, the small little state. Okay, wonder who's going to get this one. Ravens are right next to it though. Followed up, we have Maxed Out. For whatever reason, I left Rewind on the wheel. So these are the last two. Maxed Out is going to go to Idaho. That's going to be close to the Raiders and Seahawks. And our final power-up, which is Redeployed, our 10th power-up, is going to be placed on Nebraska. So that's another power-up, which the Denver Broncos will share a border with. Yes, I know this map is as complicated as Phillip Rivers' family tree, but this is the farthest I'm going to go with 10 power-ups. Let's just see what happens. This is definitely bringing up a lot of questions in mind for how this video is going to go out. Speaking of, before we continue, I have to ask a couple questions. Are you a fan of a certain NFL team, but you can't watch your favorite team's games because you're out of range, meaning you're blacked out? Or perhaps you enjoy sports video games like I do, and you want to find cheaper alternatives to get your hands on them. Keep these questions in the back of your mind, and stick around for an easy solution. In today's world, information is heavily spread throughout various entities on the internet. Now even though that might sound scary, nothing is scarier than knowing that information could be yours. Just remember somebody's always watching. I mean, put this into a football analogy. Imagine playing quarterback and you have no helmet, no pads, no nothing. I mean, you're basically just asking to break every bone in your body. That being said, let me introduce you to Private Internet Access, a VPN supplier which has been proven trustworthy multiple times in court with over 30 million downloads. Now a virtual private network, or VPN, essentially is a protected gateway that disguises your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. After all, it only takes one suspicious Wi-Fi connection for a hacker to get control of all your information. But protecting your identity is only the tip of the iceberg, as you can also get the full library of large streaming services considering certain movies and TV shows could be blacked out in your region. Speaking of blackouts, remember earlier when I was talking about how blackouts prevent you from watching your favorite team's games? I mean, take me for an example. I'm a Green Bay Packers fan living in the South. Devontae, please come back. With PIA's VPN comes 50 servers. Yes, 50 servers, one per state. So I don't have to worry about a blackout ever again based on my location. And as for the cheaper video games I mentioned earlier, you can hook up your console like your PlayStation 5 to PIA and find cheaper deals in different regions of the world. To start, head to this link right here. It should be PIAVPN.com slash Dean's World. You can find it in the description or in the pinned comment. By using this link, you get an astonishing 83 
50% offer for only $2.03 a month. Not to mention it also includes 4 months completely free alongside a coverage of a 30 day money back guarantee. Just look at how simple PIA's app is. Once I'm all signed up I select a server from an extensive list of countries and states, click this button and that's it. It's that easy. So what are you waiting for? Get protected up to 10 devices at once and explore freely for only $2.03 a month using my promo link provided and never have to worry about your information again or missing your favorite team's game. So thanks again for private internet access for sponsoring me today and let's continue with our video. And so we begin with turn number one. The Baltimore Ravens will get to go first. Their arrow is going to land southwest. And that's going to barely dodge the Washington Commanders. So they're going to take Virginia. And they're also going to get a free agent. And because no team is lost yet, the best available option is Odell Beckham Jr. An 86 overall free agent. And then we continue the spin. We're going to get the Texans. Texans will be going up north. And that's barely going to scratch Oklahoma. I mean, just by a few pixels. So our first power up, or really our first power Power down has been activated. It's poisoned. First of all, we'll go ahead and expand. This is also going to give him a free agent, so there's a good side of it. Packers legend Brian Bulaga is literally the best free agent right now. 81 overall right tackle. And then, of course, Laramie Tunsil loses 10 overall. He's still the best player in the Texans somehow, which is funny. And Brandon Cooks is going to drop to a 73. So that really hurts the Texans. Uh, they are in true poverty now. Not like they weren't already in it before. But now we're going to get the New England Patriots. Let's see if they start making a move for that double trouble power up. Their arrow went to around facing the Jets. It's actually going to hit through Connecticut first. They're going to get an expansion, which is also going to give him a free agent, who I'm going to give him Xavier Rhodes. Somehow this dude's still in the league. I thought it was washed up and like 40 years old now. And we continue. We will get the Chicago Bears. Will they be the first team to play a game? Let's see where their arrow is going to go. It's going to face towards the East Coast. That's going to run into Indianapolis. And our first game will be the Chicago Bears visiting the Indianapolis Colts. All the Bears need is one first down to end this game. They got it. That's going to do it. Bears are are gonna win 34 to 28 surprisingly Justin Fields gets it done and our first team out is the Indianapolis Colts weren't they eliminated first last time who knows but here we go again Quentin Nelson's already getting shipped around it wouldn't be an imperialism video without it and so the Colts will be the first team off the Bears making early moves I wonder how long this will last turn number two we'll start with the Kansas City Chiefs just barely They'll be going southwest, but it's going to graze through Arkansas, so that's an expansion and a free agent. And since the Colts just lost, this is so cheese. Jonathan Taylor, a 90 overall X-Factor running back, will be going to the Chiefs. That is really unfair, but that is the rules now. Buffalo Bills up next as well. Two good teams. Their air is going south. It's going to hit the south side, or excuse me, the west side of Pennsylvania, which will be the Pittsburgh Steelers, and no mercy is left for the Bills. So the Bills will beat the Steelers 34-13, and of course, TJ Watt, this decision took no brain power whatsoever, an X-Factor left outside linebacker for the Bills. And the Steelers' land gets taken over by the Buffalo Bills. Steelers have done really bad in this series. Now we'll continue on with the Ravens again. They just went in turn one. What will they be up to? Maybe get that clone power up? No, it's action to go through Commander's land. So they'll be going to the district to play the Washington Commanders. Usually the Ravens always end up beating the Commanders, but this time they're struggling a little bit. They are going to get a first down to Mark Andrews. We'll line back up at a second and eight, two minutes and 40 seconds. Lamar goes up the middle of the field. He's got Rashad Bateman. That's another first down. That's going to take us to the two minute warning now. Actually, another playoff, play action. Lamar going to run himself. Of course he does. When is he not? That's a first down. Almost had the angle before three Commanders wrestled it out to the five. It's a first and goal, two minutes left. Final play before the break, it's a touchdown. Guess who? Odell Beckham Jr. That's going to give the Ravens a three-point lead, and now it's Carson Wentz's turn. He's going to start with a first down pickup here. It's going to put him around midfield, around the 46. They just need three, but a touchdown would take the lead. Looks like Wentz is going for it. Terry McLaurin embarrasses his defender. He catches it over him, and the speeds of his whirlwind knocks down his opponent to his feet. Look at this. Oh, he's definitely not showing his face at practice tomorrow. That's embarrassing. Terry McLaurin, huge touchdown, puts the commanders up top. And now Lamar Jackson has to take back over. And here we go with a horrible play calling. Uh, Madden, for whatever reason, thinks it's college football. The clock does not stop after you get a first down. Here we're going to have a penalty marker dead at the 50. It's going to be roughing the passer. That's more like the NFL. And it's going to be against who? Chase Young, I think? Yeah, Chase Young. 
So it's going to move up 15 yards to the 35. Only 18 seconds left. And the Ravens will continue to do slants for whatever reason. I do not know who's calling these plays, but it's doing nothing. Final play of the game. Let's call a slant again. It does nothing. The Ravens, again, just don't do anything good in this series. Maybe sometimes I screw them up, but this time they kind of screwed themselves up here. And of course, the Commanders finally beating the Ravens. They will acquire Lamar Jackson. All right, so the Ravens will be eliminated again. I bet Ravens fans hate me. They probably already disliked this video, and I'm sure they all clicked off by now, so I can talk trash them if I want to. Turn four, the Lions going up next. And let's see what the Lions do. Their only options are really down south. That's where it's going. It's going to run into the Cleveland Browns. That means we're going to have a matchup in Cleveland. This is just the game I imagined, which would be a high-scoring shootout. 41 to 41 with 41 seconds, and the Browns will take control around their own 20-yard line. Deshaun Watson taking the quarterback position. He's going to run around like a toddler, like Kyler Murray. He's going to get the first down here up to the Elf logo, and it's going to set the Browns at the 50. They call a timeout. Now Watson going to pass again. He has all the time in the pocket. I wonder if he has all the time in the pocket in real life too, if you know what I mean. First down in 10. He's going to get another first down here. And now they're going to be the 36-yard line. That's going to be in field goal range. And the Browns will decide to let the clock tick to three seconds. They'll call a timeout right about now. And here is where the kick will be to win this game against the Lions in a high-scoring affair to win it. Cade York, he's got it. 44-41. Browns win. And they will steal a lion, which I don't really know if there's any good options. Frank Ragno, sure, we'll give protection to Watson. It's the same joke I made last time, but it's still as funny, I guess. All right, so the Lions will be knocked off, and the Browns will take over Michigan. And starting turn five, we'll take a spin to the Minnesota Vikings. Remember that power up to the left? Let's see if they get it. And it actually could be going that way. Does that hit North Dakota? If we're going from the logo, it barely does. I mean, by just a few yards, it looks like. And that's going to activate the rewind power-up. I wonder if you can take a guess at what legend we're bringing back from the past in the Minnesota Vikings. Stephon Gilmore, of course. I'm joking. That's just because we expanded and obviously we got to add a player. But that's still a good pickup. 90 overall. Now, the real legend we're adding is no other than Randy Moss. 99 overall wide receiver. And he's paired up with Justin Jefferson. This is about to be really scary. Okay, we'll continue and we get the LA Chargers. Let's see what they're going to do. They're probably going to play the Rams because they have to basically every time. And that's exactly what will happen. It's going to go through Rams land and we'll have the Battle of LA. So they're just going to walk down the street. Well, actually, they're not going anywhere. So Chargers will start the football from their own 21-yard line. Seven-point game. We'll start the Keenan Allen. He'll pick up five. And with a minute and 40 on the clock, Justin Herbert just going to see if he can throw it any further than that. And he'll actually get seven. Sandwich, so that results to nothing timeout called will be a third and 12 Herbert's gonna back up goes towards the left sideline that's an incompletion it's knocked up good defense we're gonna do it again for one more time it's a fourth down and 12 this time he's gonna go to the right sideline that's knocked up for an incompletion almost picked and the Rams defense holds up strong it's gonna hold the Chargers at 24 and the Rams will win this game 31 to 24 and they're gonna get steal a Charger and let's see what they're going to get. Let's give him Derwin James. Why not? 94 overall safety with an X-Factor ability. Mr. Stafford, tear down that wall. Turn number six, we'll get the Washington Commanders again. I feel like that's the only team we're getting. They'll be moving up north somewhat, a little bit northwest. And it's going to claim West Virginia, which is going to give them a free agent from a, a removed team already. Austin Eckler, who just lost to the Chargers. That is a very solid pickup. Pretty lucky if you ask me. And we'll continue. We will get the Jacksonville Jaguars. They'll probably have to play a Florida team because that's just how this works. Speaking of, it's going to go straight down south. It's going to land on the Buccaneers. So here's the Florida matchup, which you've been waiting for. It's going to be the Jaguars at the Buccaneers. Brady at midfield. We'll start the big completion here. Russell Gage gets out of bounds. Not before picking up around 30 yards. And looks like the Buccaneers are going to drain the clock down and march up the field. Let's just hand this one off to Lenny. Punch it in for six that's a touchdown. It's going to be 28-21 before the Jaguars get the ball back and have maybe a shot to send this to overtime. With only 11 seconds, we're going to have Trevor Lawrence to see if he can just throw it as far as he can. Taylor Swift does a five-yard pass. That's going to do nothing, and that's going to end this game. Buccaneers will win 28-21, and Tom Brady will start his sweepstakes to see if he can win it in Imperialism probably for the last time. How about Josh Allen, though? 
He's going to join the Buccaneers. And goodbye, Jaguars. We're going to have only one Florida team come out of this. That's just how this works. Moving on along, we have the other Florida team. It's the Miami Dolphins. And I think they only have one option because they are surrounded. And that's just how it works every time. They're going to have to play the Buccaneers. Well, it looks like Tua Tungavaloa was able to use his mind here. He's going to beat the Buccaneers 34-31. to But he probably doesn't realize that his job's getting taken over. Tom Brady, don't worry. The wife supports this decision. Oh, wait a sec. Anyways, the state of Florida is conquered by one team for the first time in the series. It's usually been kind of a mess, but now the Miami Dolphins take it fully control. The Buffalo Bills back again. What will they be up to? They will be going up north this time. That might run into a different New York team. It does. It's going to hit upstate New York, which is where I have the Giants at. Even though it makes no sense, I know you guys tell me to change it. Whatever. Hate me if you want. Anyways, second and ten. Four-point game for Josh Allen. He almost throws a pick, which is doing what he does best there. It's going to be a third down and ten with four minutes. Allen going to look for something else other than that. Going to take off himself, and maybe it's time to panic now. Fourth and 16, Josh Allen is playing like a kid. And here comes some pressure, and ball is on the ground. It's a fumble. I figured they called it an incompletion. That might have been tuck roll 2.0 with Daniel Jones. I'm going to take a look at that. <laughs> Don't show this to Tom Brady, man. That was very close to tuck rule. First down in 10. It's a four-point game. Allen from the 16. Going to get that touchdown. Maybe Isaiah McKenzie gets it to the three. And we'll pass at the three-yard line because why not? And we'll get the touchdown to Gabe Davis. That's going to put the Bills up 27-24. to Mr. Dimes will take over. I don't know how this happened, but I am not going to go against the preachings of Lord Dimes. First down and 10 from the 42. They just need a field goal to send this to overtime. Let's see if they can get it. That's the Shepard. First and 10, 50 seconds now. Daniel Jones does it again, runs out, gets a completion for a first down and more. So they're going to get that field goal, but let's see if they can get a touchdown. 30 seconds now, first down and 10 from the 24. Daniel Jones, he's going to do it again. He's going to run 10 yards out of the pocket. <laughs> he's going to lose 13 yards. I'm going to laugh if they miss this field goal now. All right, this is the send of the overtime. Graham Gano, I believe, should be kicking it. It's good. We're tied at 27. We'll be going to extra minutes where I'll actually just be speeding it up because it's probably going to take 30 minutes off my life. I can't do this anymore, man. I'm going insane. Okay. Second and seven, for whatever reason, Madden likes to start a new overtime period for no sense. I, I don't know. But anyways, Kayvon Thibodeau absolutely bodies Devin Singletary, recovers the fumble, and he's going to put an end to this game. I mean, he just embarrasses 5'5 five five Devin Singletary and picks up the fumble too. So the Giants will win this game 34-27 to in overtime, and they're going to steal Stephon Diggs, 97 overall, X-Factor wide receiver. All right, Bills are off the map, and half of New York is now claimed by the Giants, or more like three-fourths, and part of Pennsylvania as well. Here's a look at the map with 24 teams. All right, we'll start with the Tennessee Titans now that one-fourth of the league is gone, and the Titans will be going up north. I think that's probably an expansion. It is. Kentucky will be reunited with the Titans here, and Mike Evans is their free agent pickup, 90 overall X-Factor wide receiver, obviously from the Buccaneers. Now we'll go to out west to the Arizona Cardinals. They do have that bandit power up to the right. Is it going to land on it? Yes, it does. Oh, this is huge. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to roll the wheel again with all teams on it. Obviously, we've got to give them a free agent as well. Whatever team it lands on, they're going to steal the best player from. But that's an expansion. Whatever it lands on, they're stealing this player. No way. Oh, they're going to steal Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, that just completely shook the board upside down. Mahomes is now an Arizona Cardinal. And on top of that, we also got to give him a free agent, which we're going to give him Ronnie Stanley from the Ravens, a superstar left tackle, and now the Cardinals are looking 10 times better with those two pickups right there. Okay, the Bengals up next. Uh, now the Chiefs are just sitting ducks. The only things I have is Travis Kelsey, their name. Bengals will be going to the left, and that's going to hit the Bears. Let's see if the Bears can hold their ground again. And the answer to your question, they will not. Bengals will win 35-24, to and Cincinnati with the steal a player from the Bears, which they will get Quentin Nelson. Are you even surprised? I mean, I think this dude's been on the most teams on the whole series. There's just no way. We made it to turn 10. The Bears get knocked out again. And the Bengals are starting to take control of the Midwest before we know it. And the New York Jets. Maybe they want something to say about the Giants, the rising threats above them. And that's exactly what will happen as that arrow is pointing right to New York. So, Giants and Jets, we've already seen the Battle of LA. Now here's the Battle of the Big Apple. 
Third and eight for Daniel Jones, tied at 24 in overtime. Another overtime game for the Giants. It's a completion, but I'm going to call it fourth and in inches. Oh, they're going to punt the football, aren't they? That sucks, as not it? Yeah, that just sucks. The Jets are going to get the football back. Now all it takes is points to win the game. Let's see if they can get it done. Mike White is that quarterback. Hand the ball off. This is a solid run here. It's going to be a pickup of eight. Be third and two now. Four minutes left in overtime. They'll get that first down. They're at the 31-yard line. Play action for Mike White. Throw on the run. Beauty. That's going to put him up to the 48-yard line now. And they're just going to keep on marching down this clock. Mike White is playing like prime Brady right now. To the 39. And now they can probably take the field goal whenever they want to. Up to the 31 is where they'll take it. This is to win the game over the Giants and take control of all of New York. Yes, please. The Jets beat the Giants, and they're going to get Stephon Diggs out of it. So, wow, Stephon Diggs has taken a tour of New York. He's been in all three teams now, and the Giants are no longer a thing on Imperialism Episode 4. Turn number 11 will have the Jets again, because why not? This wheel loves picking the same teams. They'll be going south this time. And that's going to hit New Jersey. We have a power-up in New Jersey. It's the Afterlife power-up. So the Jets just got Stephon Diggs, a free agent, and the Afterlife power-up. All in 30 seconds, man. Life is looking good in New York. And they get Justin Herbert because the Chargers lost. This is insane, dude. The Jets are a real threat in this video already. And we're only at turn 11. All right. Now we'll go to the Denver Broncos. I'm not surprised that they got called on. Or... Realistically, I'm surprised they did get called on because usually they sit and do nothing all game. But they'll get a power-up, and it's going to be reinforced. This is a new power-up, but first off, it's going to expand and get a player. They'll get Keenan Allen, which is pretty solid. He's an X-factor for a wide receiver. How this power-up will work is it's going to give him a border wall protection. So if an arrow lands on him, it'll just protect him for one turn, and it'll break the border wall. So it's pretty cool. It's what the Broncos strive for because they do nothing all game anyways, so it could help with their isolationism. And we'll continue with the Commanders. Are you kidding me? How many times has this team been selected? Commanders are going south, and that will be running into the Carolina Panthers. Maybe the Panthers can have a run. Nope, Lamar Jackson is starting his run with the Commanders. He'll beat the Panthers, and they're going to take their best player, which is Brian Burns. Probably the worst player you can take out of any team, but he's 85 overall. It's not horrible. And the Panthers are out, and this ugly brown poop color is starting to take over the East Coast. Don't really like to see that that much. Turn 12 will have the Green Bay Packers for the first time. And they have the Bengals growing underneath them. I think that's going towards the Bengals, if I'm not wrong. It does. Let's see if the Packers are strong enough to take on Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and this young Cincinnati offense. It's a 20-20 game with a minute. The Packers are actually in range to get a field goal, but punch them more with Aaron Jones. That's a good about six-yard pickup. And the Bengals are starting to call timeouts now. Third and two. This is a big third down, however. They're not they're right on field goal range, so but Mason Crosby is pretty old. Get this first down, make it better. Aaron Jones takes it up the gut, and two dudes start to tackle each other. They don't know if you guys saw that. They're holding hands for a second. And that's a fourth down and one with two seconds left. The 17 yard lines where the kick will be. Mason Crosby drills it, and the Packers, I'll call this an upset, will take down the Bengals. And they're going to get a star wide receiver to line up with their other star wide receiver, Alan Lazard. Jamar Chase will join the pack. All right, and now the Midwest starting to look a little bit more green now. The orange is all knocked out, and turn 13, the wheel will decide. Well, first, we got to cover this, uh, what's it called, peninsula, upper peninsula, because I never colored it before. I don't know how long it's been like that. Now, here's what the top 20 on the map looks like. 20 teams, 12 teams gone, and we'll go back to the wheel for turn number 13, which will give us the Chiefs. It was almost the Jets again. I would have screamed if it was. Kansas City Chiefs, remember, Chad Henney is their quarterback now because Patrick Mahomes lost. They're going straight down south, so that's going to hit the New Orleans Saints. The Saints actually have a chance here because it's Chad Henney, but let's see, just, let's just see what happens. Uh, actually, pretty close. It's a seven-point game. Uh, Henney's going to have to have a game-tying drive and go to overtime here. He starts with a good pass. Let's see what he's cooking. He's actually got 330 yards and three touchdowns in this game. That's not bad. And they're going to resort to a check down to Travis Kelsey. Yeah, they definitely miss Patrick Mahomes. So the Saints will win, and they will take, no doubt, Travis Kelsey. If Patrick Mahomes was still there, obviously they'd take them. But still, really good. 99 overall, tight end. And now we're going to see some gold around the Mississippi as the Chiefs fall earlier than expected. Turn 14, wheel will land on the Texans again. And the Houston Texans will be moving to their right. That could be an expansion towards Mississippi, if I'm not wrong. Actually, I lied. We just talked about them. The Saints are blocking it. 
So, the Texans will go into New Orleans. It's a two-point game. Davis Mills needs to have a field goal leading drive here. Mills going up the middle of the field. He's got it. What a catch and throw. He's going to put him in the Saints territory already. And all they got to do is drain the clock, kick a field goal, and they win this game. 26-28 is where it's at now. They'll kick the field goal with 11 seconds to make it 29-28. Got it. Texans lead. And Andy Dalton, the Saints, will just have one chance to throw the ball as far as possible, which I imagine is probably around 40 yards. Actually, not a bad throw, but let's see if someone can come down with it. Knocked up on the ground. Game over. Texans will stun the, what's it called, the Saints. And Travis Kelsey will be shipped around again. He just got there. Didn't even get to pack his bags. Didn't even, couldn't even get comfortable in his hotel. And he's already moving to Houston. So now the Houston Texans are actually going to take over quite a bit of land here as they're going to knock out the New Orleans Saints. And we'll go back to the Cleveland Browns, which have a rising threat next to them, which is the Green Bay Packers. Instead, they're going to go the other way. Well, no, it's still going to hit Ohio, and the Green Bay Packers own that after taking out the Bengals. So we have the Browns versus Packers. Deshaun Watson down by a touchdown, and he's going to take a sack. Rashawn Gary makes it a third and 14 play for the Browns now with one minute. They do not call a timeout. They're down to 45 seconds left. Watson going to run out again. Another sack. I don't know if Deshaun Watson's used to taking sacks like that consecutively. Fourth down and 17. It's a seven-point game. 18 seconds. It's going to throw it up. Knocked up. Oh, no. It's the Georgia Auburn play all over again. What are you doing? you got to swat it to the ground or make a play on the ball. Don't swat it in the air. Literally, Georgia Auburn. Look at this. Is that Adrian Amos? Oh, my gosh. You, you, oh, that's just horrible. Donovan Peoples-Jones came up with that. And we went to overtime. Thankfully, Aaron Rodgers knows what he's doing. And the defense is what's selling Aaron Rodgers. This is probably why he's in a darkness retreat right now. He needs to take four days off because of his horrible defense. And this is probably the last chance for the Browns. Deshaun Watson will throw a pick in overtime. It's going to end it. The Packers will win 42-35. to That definitely should have been overtime. I lost like 30 minutes of my life uh, simulating that game. But Miles Garrett, 99 overall X-Factor right in, will join the Green Bay Packers. And this is huge. Packers are kind of stacked now with Jamar Chase and Miles Garrett. Around halfway there, we're at turn 16. The Cleveland Browns fall, and the Green Bay Packers own quite a bit of the Great Lakes region. So, the Niners will be up next. We're going to the West Coast now, and the 49ers will be moving down south. That's probably going to hit the Rams. It does. So this is going to take over the entire state of California, depending on who wins this. And it looks like that's the 49ers, 31-24 over the LA Rams. And I had to use the 2.8% of my brain, which doctors say I don't use to determine this decision. Aaron Donald will be on the 49ers. Well, just like the state of Florida, California has become one again, owned by the 49ers. And now here's a look at the map with half the league gone. Alright, moving on, we'll get the Philadelphia Eagles, in which the Eagles will be moving to their northwest-ish about. That's going to run straight into New York. They're completely surrounded. New York has the afterlife, and they're looking kind of pretty with some good players. Justin Herbert at quarterback, and looks like the Jets are actually up by six right now. It's a third and seven. Eagles are going to need one stop here. Herbert flushed out of the pocket, throw on the run. What a catch! How did he come down with that? That's going to put it into this game now. 24-18. They just got to get a first down, uh, burn their three timeouts. How about score a touchdown? That works too. And now the Jets are up by two scores. This game is far out of reach. And the Eagles are knocked out 32-18 to versus the Jets. So they didn't even have to waste their afterlife there. Good for them. And they're also going to pick up Darius Slade Jr. He's a 93 overall cornerback with a shutdown X factor. We now have our final Florida, California, and New York team as the Jets will take down the Eagles. And they have all of New York and Pennsylvania. The Raiders, what will they be up to? Their arrow is going to point towards mainland America going straight east. That is going to hit Utah as an expansion. And they're going to get Tyron Matthew. He's a 90 overall safety. For whatever reason, I completely forgot to record this part, but it was selected on the Titans and the arrow faced towards the Green Bay Packers. And, well, guess what? The Titans lost. I'm sure Titans fans did not have that on their list to watch the Titans lose in two seconds in this video, but there's that. And they're also going to steal Derrick Henry from the Titans, so the Packers are looking stacked. And as you can see, Titans are gone, and Green Bay now owns land from the Great Lakes to down south in Tennessee. And we're up to turn 19 now our spin. Next up, we're going to get the Minnesota Vikings. Are they going to take on the Packers, knowing that they're a growing threat to the right? 
No, instead, looks like they're gonna expand to South Dakota. I think the Vikings do this every episode at this point, but hey, that's not a bad thing. They're also gonna get Demario Davis. He's an X-Factor middle linebacker who was on the Saints earlier. He's a 90 overall, perfect for the Vikings. Now we'll get to Denver Broncos again. Wonder if they got any more expansions in their sleeve. That could be one right there. It's going up to the north. Uh, but a little to the right, and it's going to hit one of our new power-ups, Redeployed. To refresh how this works, basically I'm going to roll a wheel with every state on it, and they're going to swap places with this team, and it's going to swap with the Green Bay Packers. If I was to show you this Imperialism Episode 1, you'd probably be so confused. I mean, what is even going on here? Well, we'll continue, and we'll get the Denver Broncos again. Okay, well, I don't think they can expand this time because they completely changed location. Instead, they got to fight off a team on the East Coast, and which this arrow, if we're looking at it, is going to point all the way down to North Carolina. So the Broncos will be going into Washington. Lamar Jackson at quarterback. It's a third and 10, and he's got a completion here to Jahan Dotson. It's going to be first down and 10, and it's going to move the clock. Now they just got to burn the Broncos' timeouts. They're going to do that right here. There's a third down, though. Let's see if the Broncos can get a stop here. And nope, they don't feel like trying. Logan Thomas with the touchdown is going to put the Washington Commanders up two scores and they're going to beat the Broncos 24 to 12. Justin Simmons in 93 overall safety felt like the best decision here. Well, so much for this barrier wall Broncos. So you didn't even get to use it. And now the Commanders will take over all the land that was once owned by the Green Bay Packers, but now is the Broncos. Wow, the butterfly effect is strong with this game. Turn 20, we'll get the Raiders again and they will be moving to their northeast, which is actually going to expand to Idaho, which has another power up maxed out power up all right so that means we're going to take one of their random players well first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to get their expansion player which is mike evans pretty good 90 overall and an x factor and now we're going to take their best five players who are under 95 overall or excuse me under 99 overall Devonte adams is not included and it's going to land on mike evans they literally just picked him up one second ago so mike evans is going to be turned into a true 99 overall and he is sitting up there with the tops uh, in the league He's actually the best. He's got 99 on everything. But him, Randy Moss, the two best receivers in the league, I don't think that makes any sense. But welcome to Imperialism. 49ers are up next. Do you think they'd take on the Raiders, knowing that they're a growing threat? That could be going their way. Oh, instead, it's going to be really close. It's going to be an expansion for the 49ers. Maybe that was a good thing. They probably dodged a bullet there because the Raiders are looking pretty strong right now. The Niners are so stacked, there's really not much else I can upgrade, so I'll just give them a right tackle. Spin again for turn 20. The Green Bay Packers get the go for the 557th time in this video. And looks like the arrow is going to point towards the Minnesota Vikings. Does it land there? I think it does. So it's a one-point game. Aaron Rodgers down by one, has a floater here, and that's a good completion, which is going to set the Packers to the 42-yard line. Mercedes Lewis is apparently getting so much action right now, it really makes no sense. Jamar Chase and Derrick Henry is on this team, but 40-year-old uh, Mercedes Lewis is doing the most work. First down and 10 now, that's to Jamar Chase, and that's going to put the Packers on offense under a minute. They're going to kick a field goal. Looks like they were able to drain the Vikings' timeout but they couldn't get into the end zones. It's a 23-21 game. Vikings have a chance. 40 seconds for Kirk Cousins. Maybe he can hit Randy Moss for a touchdown or something, but there's Justin Jefferson, the other receiver, and he fumbles the football. Kenny Clark runs all the way to midfield and picks it up, and that's going to do it. Minnesota can't stop the clock. Packers take over on Towns, and they're going to win 23-21. Kenny Clark, man, I mean, he was just running a 40-yard dash to get that football. And, of course... Randy Moss, 99 overall wide receiver, has been added to the group. Now they have Randy Moss, Jamar Chase, Alan Lazard, and Derrick Henry. That's pretty stacked. No thanks to Alan Lazard. Well, the Minnesota Vikings are off. I think the Packers got the revenge on past imperialisms here. And now we'll get, oh my goodness, dude, Packers and Commanders. That's, the wheel just loves them to death, apparently. Commanders are going towards the south, and that's going to be an expansion. It's going to hit South Carolina, and they're also going to get a player... Demario Davis. Now the Miami Dolphins. I don't think we've heard from them, or if not in a minute at least. And that's going to go up. It's going to point towards Alabama. It's going to cross the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to allow that. That's official executive decision in the rule book here. But it's not really a good thing because that actually hits Alabama, which has the landmine power up or power down, which as you know, will take away their top player. 
which is Tyreek Hill. So Tyreek Hill is gone. He's removed from the team and no team can pick him up. He's just basically deleted from this video. But hey, we'll give him a replacement considering they did expand. Amari Cooper now joins Jalen Waddle on the Dolphins. And we'll get the New England Patriots up next for turn 21. Their arrow is going to point towards the Jets, no doubt. So the Patriots will be going into New York and they might have to beat them twice depending on what happens. Actually, I lied. This barely goes through Vermont. So the Patriots will actually expand. They're going to get DeForest Buckner. I think that's a pretty solid pickup. Even though he's only an 86 overall, he is an X-Factor. All right, now we'll continue with the Houston Texans. It's been a minute since we've seen them. And they will be going towards the heart of Dallas. Don't really know if this is the greatest idea, but, well, they don't really have a choice. A program decided it for them. And the Texans, they're actually up by three, but not before the Cowboys will probably punch into the end zone. I gotta say, it's pretty surprising Texans scored 38 points. Considering that they landed on the poison power effect in the beginning of this video, I thought it would make them worse, but apparently it actually made them better. But anyways, Tony Pollard scored that touchdown. It puts him up four points, and 38-42, Davis Mills' final play of the game. Third and four, knocked up, tossed around. Welcome to Madden 23, ladies and gentlemen, and that's going to put it in this game. Cowboys will win 42-38. The greatest player they can take from the Texans is Travis Kelsey because he's on the Texans, because he came from the Saints, because he came from the Chiefs, and you get the point. All right, so that means the Houston Texans are off the map, and Dallas is actually going to take quite a bit of land here. Turn 22 spin is going to land on the Jets. Uh, our three favorite teams this wheel likes are the Jets, Commanders, and Packers. No bias at all. The Jets will be going towards the Patriots this time, so this is going to be a matchup finally it's going to be in Foxborough however and kind of a weird score here 16 to 8 and it's a fourth and 10 so Justin Herbert has to get a first down here if he wants to stay alive they'll still be okay they do have afterlife but it's gonna hurt Herbert gonna look short to Elijah Moore he stops short of the first down Patriots take over on downs and they should win this game over the Jets taking away their afterlife power up and also stealing one player. They're going to take Stephon Diggs, which is a huge blow for the Jets. That was really helping them get this far. And of course, no significant map changes other than this little heart is erased off the map. Good job, Patriots. And now going to turn 23, we will continue with the Arizona Cardinals. They have, remember, they have Patrick Mahomes. We haven't seen him from them since. They got him, and that's going to be going towards the Niners. So this is a tough matchup for Mahomes on his newly team, new team, the Cardinals and turn 23. He's actually up by four points, but the Niners do have the football the minute and 30. We have Jimmy Garoppolo in the game. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should put Brock Purdy in. That was horrible. Third down and three from their own 15. They got to go the basically the whole length of the field. That's going to be a big chunk there, plus some more. George Kittle evades two tackles in open space, running against three Cardinals, and he's dragged down at the 13. Huge play by George Kittle, and that could be the difference in this game if they're able to touch down into the end zone. First and 10 for Garoppolo. Going to lay it short for Christian McCaffrey. He fumbles the football, picked up by the Cardinals. A huge change of events, and now the Cardinals, they got to get a first down. They win this game. Completely flipped the script, and looking at this holdup, maybe... Christian McCaffrey was actually down. I'm expecting a booth review any second now. Oh, booth review. There it is. Finally. Yeah, I think his butt was down. We'll get another look at it, thankfully. And I think so. Let's get another definite look at this. From this angle, this is probably the best angle. Down. Yep. Niners are going to retain possession of the football. Now third down and two. And Garoppolo is only going to Christian McCaffrey. This is uh, basically Matthew Stafford with Cooper Cup again. It's that white on white connection you gotta trust. And CMC finally breaks the plane, doesn't fumble it this time, and the Niners have the go ahead touchdown to take the lead over the Cardinals. Patrick Mahomes will basically probably play his final play with the Cardinals right here. The only play you've seen him suiting up with the Cardinals. And basically, he loses this game. He's going to San Francisco. Final play of the game, airs it up, knocked down, that's it. Niners will win 31 to 28 and I didn't have to use my brain for this one. All right, so the Cardinals are off the map and the San Francisco 49ers are starting to engulf the West Coast and working their way down to the Southwest. Take a look at that area of land. Also important to mention, this is what our top 10 teams look like on Imperialism Episode 4 map. And we'll continue to get the Patriots again. Same teams get the go. Patriots will be going up north. This could be an expansion to New Hampshire. 
And looks like the Patriots are doing what they do best. Get the New England States back together. I think they've done this every episode now. And actually a good expansion because they're going to get Alvin Kamara, a superstar running back at an 87 overall. Kind of surprising that he's that slow, but he has kind of fell off. I mean, he's kind of too busy punching people in Vegas nightclubs anyways. Commanders! Again, because why not? And the Commanders will be going up north as well, which that's going to run through the Jets' land. So, this is a top 10 matchup I think everyone's expecting. Jets, Commanders, and well, Jets completely fall off. They're going to lose their afterlife power-up, and they lose to the Commanders. And then Darius Slade Jr. will join the Commanders. So, Lamar Jackson is cooking something with his new team. Maybe that was the issue. Ravens, you got to pay him. Thankfully, the Commanders did. And now you can start to see this ugly brown color take control of the East Coast as the Jets had a good run. They're off the board, though. Atlanta, finally a new team. Atlanta Falcons, they haven't been selected once in this whole video, and it's kind of the wrong time because they're sandwiched between two good teams. This is either going to be against the Commanders or the Dolphins. That's going up towards Washington. Atlanta's got to play the Commanders with Lamar Jackson. Well, I didn't expect anything different here. Commanders will win with Lamar 45-24 to over the Atlanta Falcons. And the best player they can get is a right guard, Cliss Lindstrom, for a 91 overall. Sorry, Atlanta. I really can't do anything about this wheel. It's kind of biased. Eight teams remain, and we're at the turn 26. The Patriots will get the go again. Do they take on the Commanders, or do they expand that Double Trouble power-up? This is going up north, and I think that hits Maine. It does. So the Double Trouble power-up, which I thought maybe wouldn't even been used this video, has been activated by the Patriots. Just a quick reminder how it works. They get to steal two players for every game they win, and they also got an expansion. They're going to get Cameron Jordan, another Saints player, and he's an X-Factor as well. Turn 26, the Seattle Seahawks. That's the other team that has not gone yet. So every team has gone at least once, finally. And Seattle Seahawks cannot go to the Pacific Ocean. That won't be allowed. They'll be going inland, of course. And that's going to run into Idaho, which is owned by the Raiders. And let's just see if the Seahawks can make a late push in this video. Maybe get a big win here. Can steal a good player, including Mike Evans right there. He's a maxed out 99 overall. Seahawks actually have the lead right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Evans changes that. Let's see if that happens. Oh, uh, go figure. Uh, Mike Evans literally scores a touchdown right as I'm saying that. 99 overall, by the way. So, there you go. It's going to be a three-point game for Geno Smith. You got to look for a touchdown here and a full drive. And I don't know what was going on there. You got to get rid of the football, Geno. It's the second and 22 now. We're down to 24 seconds on a third down 11. They did pick up 11. Geno is wasting all the time he wants to here. He's going to walk at five miles per hour. I don't know why we're going to run the football here. That's probably the stupidest thing to do. And now, fourth down and six, you're basically just set up yourself for failure. They call a timeout, 11 seconds. And here's the final play for the Seattle Seahawks. More than likely, Geno, okay, yeah, sure, throws a pick. That's the best case scenario to happen there. Raiders will win, and they're going to steal Jamal Adams, the superstar safety, at an 89 overall. You just got to love when a team sits on the map for the entire game, and then they get unlucky, of course. And, well, the Seahawks are one of them. They're gone. And, again... Let's go to our favorite team on this wheel, the Golden Child Commanders. What would they be up to? They're going to be going up north. That's probably going to hit the Patriots, and the Patriots got a little bit of strength recently. However, hold up a second. Does this actually go through Delaware? No way. We finally have the clone power-up used. It took for almost the entire game. First of all, we're going to get an expansion. DK Metcalf will go to the Commanders, an uh, X-Factor to 83 overall wide receiver. A refresher on how clone works, I'm going to take a wheel with every independent state left on it, and I'm going to spin it, and whatever it lands on, that team will get a second land area, where the Commanders will get a second land area in Montana. That's on the completely opposite side of the country. So now they have this giant club on the East Coast, and now they have Montana to their name. And so it's basically a second life as well. So let's see what happens from here. All right, we have eight teams remaining. The Patriots will get the go again. I think their only choice is to take on the Commanders, but they do have Connecticut or Rhode Island right next to them. So if I claim that, probably won't do that. Uh, and that's going to hit the Commanders, not a doubt in my mind. So the Patriots will be going into Washington for a tough battle right here. And third down and one, 20 to 23. If they get this first down, it'd be huge because then they can get a touchdown. And Mac Jones is going to shuffle pass it off of the back of his O-lineman. He thinks he's Patrick Mahomes there for whatever reason. Instead, they're going to have to settle for three. Whatever. So they're going to bring their kicker out. Tie this game at 23 apiece. And we'll have 90 seconds left for the commanders to do something to see if they can knock off the Patriots. Kickoff. I don't really show the kickoff at all in the video. So that means something's bound to happen, right? Right? Minute 28. 
And of course, the Commanders fumble the football. Patriots pick it up at the 20 yard line with a minute and 25 seconds. If they manage wisely, they can win this game. But I'm going to eat in my own words again because that's exactly what's not going to happen. They do not manage wisely. It's a third down and nine, a minute and 18. They're going to hand the ball off, just trying to waste all the timeouts the Commanders have. They do that successfully but they cannot end the game here. Instead, they're going to settle for three points, make it 26-23, and give the ball back to the Commanders, where this time they won't fumble the kickoff. I didn't show it because nothing bad happened. Hooray. Now we'll have the Commanders with Lamar Jackson, second and three. Lamar just going to air it as far as possible, and DK Metcalf, the new receiver in town, comes down with it. They don't have a timeout, so they're going to have to run across the entire damn field and get a playoff. And we have AI bots that can talk like presidents, but Madden still cannot spike the ball. So they have to do it like this. Thankfully, Lamar gets it out of bounds with his pass. And that's going to stop the clock, meaning they can bring out the field goal kicker to tie this game to send it to overtime at 26 apiece. Wow. Okay, we're going to overtime. And so we're going to start with the Washington Commanders around midfield. This is a third down and three. It's a big play for the Commanders defense and Lamar Jackson sells the bag. It's going to be fourth and three. They're going to have to punt the football and the Patriots have a chance to win with any points now. They're at midfield as well. Mac Jones, second and three, hand the ball off. Alvin Kamara, I almost forgot he was on this team. He gets the first down, and we're in Commander's territory. Two minutes left, 49-yard line. Jones going to go through a pass. We're going down the field now for that field goal. That's a pickup of nine. And they're going to march all the way down to the four-yard line. Mac Jones will throw it to the touchdown to Stephon Diggs. That's going to put it in this game, and the Patriots will stun the Commanders. Commanders are not eliminated. They'll just be resorting to Montana from here on out. And because Patriots have double trouble to get steal two players, Lamar Jackson at quarterback will be their first stealing, and our second one will be Darius Slay, the shutdown cornerback. Big turn of events here on the East Coast in the Great Lakes region as the Patriots will take land from Maine to South Carolina and as far as Wisconsin as well. Big play for them. And the next roll will land on the Green Bay Packers. They now resort out in Colorado because they don't own Wisconsin anymore. It's kind of funny. And looks like they'll be going more out west. That's probably going to hit the Raiders, if I'm not wrong. It does. It's going to hit Utah, which is owned by the Raiders. Damn, Green Bay. What happened here? 49. They're going to put up 50 points. They just dropped a 50 bomb on the Raiders. I mean, the Raiders are not really that good. The only thing they really had was 99 overall Mike Evans. And it's funny because the Packers don't even need him. I mean, they already have Randy Moss, Jamar Chase, and Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard is definitely better than this scrub right here. Maxed out Mike Evans will join the Packers. And Green Bay will take over the Raiders' land, which goes that far out to Nevada and Idaho. In our next spin, we will get the... Okay, I'm not even going to say their name. The one that shall not be named... And let's see what they're going to be up to. They will be going towards down to their left. Remember, they're at Montana. We didn't even need to spin that arrow. I don't even know why I did. It's going to hit the Green Bay Packers no matter what. This is the final chance for Commanders. And since they lost Lamar Jackson, Carson Wentz is back on the field. That's pretty tough. But Carson Wentz showing a bright side here. No, he can't get it. Third down and 10. A little deja vu, too. I was kind of scared that Packers players swatted it down. Uh, we saw what happened earlier. Uh, speaking of SWAT, this time in the Packers' favor because it's going to ricochet into an interception for Devondre Campbell and the Green Bay Packers will win this game 32-28 to of the Commanders and name a bigger fall off than the Commanders in this video. Justin Simmons will be stolen. He'll go to the Green Bay Packers. It's a 93 overall safety. Commanders had a pretty good run. I'm honestly kind of relieved because I don't want to hear their name again. And now Montana has taken over the Packers and this is what our map looks like with the final five teams. Every spin counts. Now we'll get the New England Patriots. They took over the entire East Coast, so this arrow is going to be pretty easy to hit anybody. Looks like this could hit Alabama, actually. It's a straight on to Alabama, which is owned by the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins have Tom Brady. Remember, they lost Tyreek Hill because he hit the landmine. And we're actually in overtime, so an AFC East throwdown. Tom Brady hands the ball off. We'll be at a second down and nine at the 24-yard line. We're going to keep on running the football, sure. Not really going to do much here, so this is going to set up a third down and nine, which kind of sucks. The Patriots get a stop here. They can win this game if they put some points on the board. But nope, Brady steps up, and that's going to be a rocket to Jalen Waddle. It'll be a first and ten of their own 38-yard line. They're going to try to drive down this field, maybe get a touchdown to win this game. This is a second possession. I probably should say that. And there's Amari Cooper, the Tyree Kill replacement. Brady... Now Brady's on a tear. I mean, when you get Brady going, he's going. That's another completion to Amari Cooper in first and 10. They're just going to drain this all the way to the two-minute or four-yard line, I mean. And guess who has the touchdown? Mike Gusecki. That's going to put it in this game. The Patriots had a good run in this video, but the Dolphins 
who have been sneaking around this entire video, they will come up and take the entire East Coast, as well as Stefan Diggs, who's been tossed around this video like crazy. And now we can watch the East Coast turn blue as the New England Patriots, which I was kind of actually cheering for, they'll be eliminated off the map. But the Miami Dolphins, next one up. Four more empires left. Let's see who we get. We're going to get the 49ers. We don't even have to roll the arrow here because there's nowhere the Niners can go. They are completely surrounded by the Packers. I know they do touch the borders with the Cowboys, but an arrow is basically impossible to uh, point there. So that means the Green Bay Packers will be playing the 49ers. Two-minute warning. Niners are down by five. We're going to have Patrick Mahomes and the Niners now. We'll start the completion here. That's a first down pickup. It's going to put the Niners to the eight-yard line. Mahomes now, minute and 30 on the clock, fakes the handoff to Debo, sidearms it, and he's got Christian McCaffrey on a slant. Okay, and that's going to put the Niners up over the Green Bay Packers, 29-28. to They're going to go for two here. It's going to make it a three-point game. Packers going to stop here. It's going to be huge. Hand off to Christian McCaffrey, and he gets swallowed up at the two-yard line. That is a huge play for the Green Bay Packers because they have three timeouts in 90 seconds. So a field goal would win the game. Rodgers is going to start now. We're already close to midfield. They're going to call their first timeout with 30 seconds left of the 45. They're up to 49 now. Still have two timeouts. Second and four with 20 seconds. And just short of the first down is Derrick Henry. Call another timeout with 19 seconds. Be third down and one for the Niners. Get 10 yards here, and I think they'll be in good shape. And that's more than what's needed. Alan Lazard, out of all receivers, comes up big. We're at the 34-yard line. They're going to call a timeout. And this is where the kick will be to put the Packers over the Niners. 31-29. And Patrick Mahomes will get one final chance in this video if he wants to stay alive for the 49ers. Zeros on the board. And the ball in the air. Going to be knocked down. And the Green Bay Packers will hold against the Niners. They will take over the West Coast. And we're down to our top three teams as well. Probably the safe and easy decision here. I'm not going to move Patrick Mahomes because I feel like Aaron Rodgers can get it done. Man, come on. He just took four days off in a darkness retreat. I think his mind is well rested for this. All right, so as you can see, the West Coast completely green. And the Niners got close to another one. Niners have been really good in the series. Speaking of really good in the series, the Cowboys, they have been really good in the series too. I mean, they've basically made it the top five every single time. Here's our top three. These spins are huge. This one basically determines who gets second place. Uh, the Cowboys, they will have to either play the Dolphins or the Packers. Whatever team it doesn't point to, they're making it to the finals. It's going to point to the Packers. So the Dolphins advance to the final game, and the Packers and Cowboys will play in the semifinal to play the Dolphins, basically. That's what I'm going at here. So, Cowboys at Packers. It's funny I'm saying at Packers because they don't even own Wisconsin. The Dolphins have it. Dak Prescott, we're going to start the completion. The CD Lamb will fumble the football, picked up by Jair Alexander. Is that how we're going to end that quickly? Already? 38-34 is the score now. Cowboys only have one timeout. That's game. CeeDee Lamb fumbles the football and fumbles the run of the Cowboys completely over. And the Green Bay Packers win 38-34. They get to steal one more player, which is going to be Travis Kelsey. I think Jason Kelsey's probably more proud that he's not a Cowboy anymore. I wonder what he thought about that one. And Kelsey will join the Packers in a stacked offense and wide receiver room. So here it is. The final two teams after we color the Cowboys land green. Eliminate them off the board. And now Packers, Dolphins, Packers west of the Mississippi. Dolphins east of the Mississippi. Now we're going to do one more spin. Remember the spin determines who's home and who's away. Whoever it lands on will be the attacking team, which means they are on the road. The Dolphins will be attacking the Green Bay Packers, meaning the Dolphins will have to go to Lambeau. Final game of Imperialism 4. It's a high-scoring shootout in overtime between Tom Brady and the Dolphins and Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Third and nine for Brady. Oh, he just overthrows his target. It was Jalen Waddle, I believe. It was Jalen Waddle or Amari Cooper. But either way, that should have been a touchdown. That is probably going to hurt. And now the Green Bay Packers will have a chance after they had to punt the football. We're going to start getting up some steam to Mike Evans, the 99 overall wide receiver. Aaron Rodgers has like 500 yards and four touchdowns this game. That is crazy. There's Mike Evans again. He completely bodies a kid. And that's going to be a first down pickup with a 41-yard line. It is completely unfair. He's got 99 overall stiff arm and everything. And look at this, Jamar Chase in open daylight, pushed out of the 10, Green Bay Packers, all they need is a field goal, and they will win Imperialism 4. How about handing off the Derrick Henry, breaks one tackle, evades the second, and the Green Bay Packers will send America packing, and they will win Imperialism Episode 4, beating the Dolphins in overtime, 
48 to 42. Look at these stats real quick. Rodgers, 555 yards, four touchdowns. Brady did really good too. He had 47 yards and four touchdowns. Of course, this receiving room, Tom Brady, or not Tom Brady, Mike Evans, Travis Kelsey, Jamar Chase, Randy Moss. Look at this team. Aaron Rodgers, Derrick Henry, Mike Evans, Aaron Jones, Randy Moss, Jamar Chase, David Bakhtiari, Travis Kelsey, and that's just the offense. Take a look at the defense now. We're going to have Aaron Donald, Kenny Clark, Miles Garrett, Jerry Alexander, Justin Simmons, Rashawn Gary. This is insane. So now it's finally time to paint America green as the Green Bay Packers get it done over the Miami Dolphins, and they had a flawless streak, 9-0 in this video. Green Bay has done it. So thank you guys for watching Imperialism 4. Green Bay Packers win it, but I think we know the true winner here. It's got to be Private Internet Access VPN. They truly own America because you can get a VPN server in every single state. Remember, 83% off, $2.03 a month. Don't miss out. Link is in the bio and in the pinned comment. So you still want to stick around for this series because it's only going up from here. That's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.